Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I am here today visiting Marstar up in Canada, and they had two different belt-fed full-auto 762 by 54 rimmed machine guns. And I thought this would be a very interesting chance to take a look at these two guns side by side, shoot them side by side, and do some analysis of, well, which is better for which. So, uh, we are going to start off by doing a little bit of shooting with the Czech UK-59, or I'm sorry, VZ-59, and then a little bit of shooting with this, which is actually a Yugoslav M84 PKM. All right, so my conclusion is pretty simple, this. Um, it's interesting that these two guns are pretty much the same weight. They're not that far apart in terms of weight. They're not that far apart in terms of handling either. They both have a pretty good pistol grip, nice shoulder stock. Uh, they both shoulder very well uh, when you're going to shoot, but the VZ-59 really kind of beats you up in a way that the PKM doesn't. Uh, the PKM allows you to actually keep your sights on target and keep some uh, situational awareness of the mosquitoes while you're shooting. Uh, you can kind of keep a sight picture at this while you're running. With the VZ-59, uh, not so much. This gun, it vibrates around on you a lot more. It does a much better job of transmitting the recoil into you, which isn't really what you want it to do. The PKM is really kind of a softer shooting gun. Now, the original operating mechanisms for these guns, uh, what they're originally based on, they're both quite good. Uh, this is, of course, basically an upside-down enlarged AK, and this is basically the final iteration of the ZB-26, or Bren gun, um, as it was also developed into. So a lot of great lineage, but I, I think this needs a little more meat, or a little bit slower rate of fire, or a better buffer for the bolt. Some way to cushion, absorb a little more of the recoil in the system which is something the PKM actually does really well. Now what's interesting is, in the US at least, we have the option of seeing both of these guns in semi-auto as well. They're both expensive, but they're both out there on the market in the way that full auto versions just aren't accessible to the general public. And in semi-auto, I, while I haven't fired extensively either of these in semi-auto, I get the feeling that the preference would actually be reversed. The problem with the PKM is that it's so good in full auto and so controllable, that if you're limited to just single shots at a time, it's really kind of a waste of the gun. Um, yeah, it's a waste of the potential. Where with the VZ-59, the full auto firing really is kind of unnecessary. It's not all that useful. And the semi-auto is where this gun actually really does shine. So interesting that if you've got them in semi-auto, well, it, in fact, literally, honestly, if you offered me both of these in semi-auto, 
I would probably take the VZ59. It's, it's easier to operate in semi-auto. Um, I like the, the pistol grip charging thing. It's a, more, it's a more svelte gun. It's a little slimmer. It doesn't have as much stuff hanging off of it as the PKM does. But if I had the option of either of these in full auto, I would immediately and unquestioningly take the PKM. In fact, I'd be tempted to take the PKM over almost any other rifle caliber machine gun out there in its class, you know, in its size category. So, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this little look into two similar and yet very different light machine guns. So thanks again to Marstar for letting me uh, take a look and dump some ammo through both of their guns here. If you're up in Canada, definitely check them out for all of your shooting supply needs and uh, tune in next time to Forgotten Weapons for more interesting light machine guns.